in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, um, the harvests have intensified and increased. It's way bigger. It's way mightier. It's bigger than what Solomon saw and what Abraham saw and what Isaac saw and what Jacob saw. It's way more intense. So when someone starts to experience the harvest, anointing of the spirit, it brings shame to the satanic kingdom because it, it validifies that the father is really, he's, he's operating in the totality of the kingdom of heaven on earth for you. And so a lot of people are given this opportunity and it goes over their head. They don't ever see it. But it shouldn't be your portion. Like you, you have to take it by force. That's what the word say. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You're supposed to be the one saying, I'm not going to let money cometh and increase in abundance and health and healing. I'm not going to let that go past me. For you to get a harvest, you have to overcome a lot of deception. Because the serpent will even speak through people that seem harmless to kill the momentum of your sowing into God. To kill the momentum of your faith. So you have to be real deception proof, aggressive in keeping the wisdom that is given to you. Now, I, I want you to catch this. The sowing wisdom of God will not remain in anybody's life without sowing understanding. The sowing understanding keeps you in honor even when you meet people that are anointed with dishonor. Do you know that there's people that are satanically anointed to dishonor God? And so even when you talk to them, their words are mockery against the kingdom system. Their words will mock the flow of the spirit. They'll laugh at it. They'll make it into a joke that Christ is comedy to a fool. If you take it, let's write that down. Christ is comedy to a fool. And even one conversation with them will leave your soul heavy and grieved and burdened because they just transmitted demonic words, vocabulary, and mindsets and philosophies to you. You ever spoke to somebody and felt heavy after you spoke to them? I'm not talking about conviction to change. I'm talking about you feel heavy with depression, oppression. When people carry heavy spirits of rebellion towards God, even after they talk to you, they'll talk to you like you're the fool for submitting to God. That's why the Bible says only a few there be that finds the way that leads to life. It's only a few there be that find it. The sowing anointing is something that you have to grow in understanding about because the wisdom of it alone is not enough to keep you. Did you know that people that give ungodly counsel are very, are very pushy and aggressive to teach? Ungodly counselors will find you even if you're hidden, they'll search for you. When Satan is after stopping the plan of God for harvests in your life, people will find you by force. Forcefully, they'll find you. They'll find you at your workplace. They'll find you in your city. They'll find you, in your, if you're in a relationship. They'll find you if you are uh, uh, doing any activity, any task. They will find you because harvests are meant to torment the 
powers of darkness. When any man steps into harvests, the powers of darkness are embarrassed because you remind fallen angels of, of what they're missing out on. Remember, they are the deceived. They turned away from lavish living to become hellbound. They turned away from uh, riches to be poor and to be thieves. Now they stealing, they stealing from people that's blind and making it look like they could give offers to those people like they are carrying lifestyles. Are you seeing this? They are liars. They are thieves. Have you ever noticed that certain animals walk around at nighttime? Because they're vagabond animals. You ever saw a stray cat? You ever saw a stray dog? They walk around at nighttime because they are vagabonds and criminals in the animal kingdom. They like to move in the night, even the bats. The bats like to move in the night because they don't like light. They don't like daytime. They like nighttime. There are people, when they're carrying dishonor, they only like to move in darkness. They don't want to move in light. So if you're carrying the light of the gospel, even concerning sowing and honoring God, because the kingdom of God operates by seed. You sow seed to plug in to the power of the spirit through the words that he's transmitting through the airways. Satan is called the prince of the power of the air because Satan is imitating Jesus' methodology to release power through words, videos, music. Satan is imitating God's way to release his word into the airways. That's why when the man told the Lord, Send the word and my servant will be healed. He was saying, send the seed. The word is the seed. So the man understood seed principle that once it is sown, the harvest coming. My goodness, I hope you ain't miss what I just said. I hope you didn't miss what I just said. I hope you didn't miss it. When the man said, send the word. He was saying, send the seed. So Jesus said, I have not found faith like this in all of Israel. I have never seen nothing like this yet. Because the man understood the seed principle that everything is the, in the seed principle, whether it is money, whether it is uh, Bible, whether it is um, decrees, whatever seed is sown, it comes back with harvests that benefit you and make your life more blissful and exciting and happy. You can't sow the seed if you don't understand the harvest. Because the harvest is a place where the Spirit of God, He doesn't want you to live a boring life. He wants your life to be full of transferences and supplies and investments. When your life is not receiving harvests from God, it becomes even more easier for you to backslide. Because the depression of not seeing the appearance of what you know is yours makes the soul faint and become weaker, and become more gullible, and become more prone to pollution and perversion. Who do you know in the history of your bloodline lived in continual harvests? Huh? I say, who do you know in your bloodline lived in continual harvests? I want to know. Who do you know? In your bloodline that lived in continual
Who do you know in your bloodline walked in continuous manifestation of harvests? Who? Do you know? Could you say your mama? Could you say your dad? Could you say your brother, your sister? Can, do you know? Anybody in the history of your bloodline that walked in continual harvests? Because you live a life trying to hustle because nobody was harvest champions. And when you have that in your bloodline, you are also another statistic in the making, according to the kingdom of Satan, that you also won't live in continual harvests. So oftentimes you might agree, yeah, I don't know nobody in my bloodline that walked in continual harvest. I don't know nobody that broke open their money coming in God's kingdom. I'm not talking about win no lottery ticket. I'm not talking about, oh, they won the black ball, the blue ball. I ain't talking about that. I said receiving from the kingdom of heaven. Yes, you can become rich apart from God, but you're a thief and a robber. The Bible talk about if you try to enter into uh, the blessing, the kingdom, any other way than the way that the Lord taught you, you are a thief and a robber. So we're not dealing with the fact that there are people that have a lot of things. They got the things by copying their master, Satan, stealing, killing, and destroying. So, so that's not the true blessing. You become rich because you follow a system of saving money or doing all the things that the world teaches. That's not the blessing. If somebody come to rob you, they're going to successfully rob you. There's no angelic ministry protecting you. One time I was walking, I, I, I was walking and I saw around my house, I saw cherubims carrying a pot of gold. Around my house, I saw, I saw men walking in royal garments. Cherubims walking around my house with gold coins. A pot of gold. You ever seen that before? I, talk, I talked to you about it when, when I, I had saw it. Cherubims with a pot of gold. Because it's the financial anointing. It's the power to get wealth God's way. But see, I promise you I sow more than you. I promise you that I'm more conscious of sowing because all day long I'm thinking about seed. I'm thinking about time, and I'm thinking about harvest. But when you think about harvest, it empowers the seed, and it makes time enjoyable. When you think about the harvest, you can sow the seed and then enjoy the time until you see the visibility of the harvest instead of being snobby and jealous of people and being angry when you see them receive some type of good news. You would be shocked how many times people get jealous when somebody else gets a harvest because you're childish and wicked. The Holy Spirit not trying to make nobody a multimillionaire if you fleshly and carnal. If you're a carnal person, you do not fit the criteria for the cash flow of Christ. If somebody telling you their testimony irritates you, you have a spirit of jealousy that wants to compare where you're at in your story of sowing and waiting and harvesting, and you want to pitch yourself on the plateau. No, it should have been me. It should have been me. That is what you call folly. It is foolishness. You never should find yourself comparing somebody else's harvest and what they have yielded and received. You should never find yourself trying to compare with them and being upset that they have the visible appearance of it and you don't. Remember I told you that Cain 
was underneath the microscope. God put the light on him after he blessed Abel and said, why are you mad? So God looks at people's countenance to watch and see what is going on with you when I bless somebody in front of you. You're not smarter than me for me to bless them. They qualify for the time frame of due season. Now, I want you to remember this statement that I'm about to say. When you so big, big temptations are coming. Big detours are coming. Wow. When you so big, I'm breaking a yoke apostolically. I just felt chains break off people's soul as I just said that. I just felt chains break off people's soul when I just said that. When you so big, big sorcery is coming your way. Big lies, big deceivers, and big deceptions is coming your way. And you're going to be tried. Not only will you be tried by God, but you're going to be tempted of the devil. The devil not going to let nobody step into wealth. As a piece of cake. The devil going to come and throw the final shot to see, can I get you to believe my lie before you get to God's endless supply? Unfortunately, many people believe Satan over God. If Satan got to use horniness, if Satan got to use boredom, if Satan got to use uh, loneliness, if Satan got to use fear, doubt, unbelief, bitterness, jealousy, if the devil got to use offenses. But Satan going to try to send wind your way to trick you. And if you follow the wind, you won't win the harvest and you won't win the battle. You'll lose. It's not going to be no easy thing. You think you're going to step into money coming from wealth? easy. I done beat that sucker down so many times. It's nothing to me. But I often scratch my head and wonder, why do people have so much struggle overcoming Satan? Because you have been so united with Satan for so many years. When you up there jerking and acting like you got the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no Holy Ghost, baby. You have religion. You've been religious all your life acting like you know the Lord. You don't know him. Knowing the Lord give you dominion. Knowing the Lord make you untouchable. Satan tried to pit his. The other day I was driving with my son. And people be texting on their phone so they be coming over on the lane. The person over there didn't even, they didn't even, they didn't even see me. I saw them coming over on my lane to hit my car. You know what I did? I stiff-armed them in the Holy Ghost, just like this. And their car went over. <laughs> they almost hit the rail on the other side. And I told my sons, I, see, I said, you see that stiff arm? If you don't know what a stiff arm in, in football, the running back or the wide receiver, whoever got the ball, they'll use a stiff arm to, like, push away the person that's trying to tackle them. But I did the stiff arm in the Holy Ghost. That person don't even know why they felt their hand touch the steering wheel and stare all the way to the left. What I'm telling you, some of you all don't even know how to stiff arm Satan. Satan coming to arrest you with a sin, arrest you with a temptation, arrest you with a mindset, arrest you with a... a, a, a a little fox to spoil your vine. And you don't even know how to stiff arm. You just let Satan tackle you. And then Tom said, oh, I done messed up again. Oh, I done missed the mark again. Baby, you ain't. You don't know who you is. Wake up. You more powerful than you know. You got more glory than you know. 
But the glory waited for you to wake up. Stop acting like you're the victim. You're not the victim. You're victorious. The blood of Jesus done came and removed all them excuses and all those manipulative lies. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I got strength that I didn't feel yesterday waiting for me today. I got strength today that I never felt all days that I live on this earth. I got strength that I never tapped into yet. He strengthened me. That strength not just going to move me into one right decision. It moves me to the next glory of perfection. That means I don't make no more mistakes. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10, verse 9 says, Whoever is born of God does not sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. Whoever is born of God does not sin. Have you been born of God since you believed? Have you been born of God since you said Jesus is Lord? Have you been born of God yet? Because when you're born of God, money cometh is your anthem. You move money by your speech. Your meditation is anointed with financial wisdom. When you're born of God, abundant life is your anthem. The hundredfold return is your anthem. The thousandfold is your anthem. Whatsoever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See this apostolic. I am the looser, not the loser. My goodness. <laughs> When you understand that the harvest is in your beck and call, you call those things that be not as they were. If you believe that you receive it, you shall what? Have it. I am the looser, not the loser. 